Hi, uh, my name is Oad, and today I'm going to talk about efficient online way to multi level paging. Uh, this is a joint work with Mikhail Van Sal and Sethino. Okay, so first let's start off with online caching. So, online caching is an extensively studied uh, problem in uh, the field of online algorithms. And this problem, we have n pages that reside in slow memory and a fast memory of size k, which is the cache. And we have a request sequence in uh, each. The sequence contains L of page requests at each time the page requests arrive. And in order to serve the request, we're going to need to uh, have the page that is currently requested at the cache at the time it is requested. So um, the measure of how algorithm for the problem works is by cache miss. The cache miss is when a page is missing from the cache and is, it is requested uh, in the sequence. And we want to minimize the number of cache misses. So um, the LRU algorithm, for instance, is an uh, online algorithm for the problem that uh, obtains a comparative factor of order of K. And it was shown by Spaker and Taj and David Pai. And at 91, Fiat and I'll show a randomized marking algorithm, which is a randomized algorithm uh, that gives a order of log K a comparative ratio, and both of them are tight as there is lower bound for the problem uh, of uh, omega of k for deterministic algorithm and omega of log k for randomized algorithm. Uh, okay, so the way that the caching is the same as the, um, the online caching, however, this time each page is associated with the weight, and instead of cache misses, we talk about the total fetching cost of request of pages to the cache throughout the request sequence, and uh, Young showed that the one that um, there is an order of K deterministic algorithm and BBN showed in uh, 2007, there is a log K randomized algorithm for the problem. The, and that is done via online routing uh, for, of the fraction of solution. And actually it showed that the weight version is no more hard, no, it's not harder than the uh, unweighted version. Uh, and also we can, instead of fetching costs, talk about eviction cost, which is uh, equivalent up to a factor, uh, up to a constant factor. Okay, so uh, up to an um, additive constant factor. So today we're going to talk about radical web caching, which is a um, generalization of uh, weighted caching uh, and of regular caching. There are two types of requests in radical web caching. There are read requests and write requests. And the main difference is that read requests just keep the data as it is, and write requests changes the data uh, in each page. So Whenever we have a write request to a page, we change the page within the cache. And then when we want to evict the page back to the memory, we need to modify the, the slow memory with the modified data that we have in the cache. So we distinguish between those two type of requests for dirty pages and uh, of evictions for dirty pages and clean pages. And therefore, we want to uh, create, a, we have a model that um, does just that. Uh, the, in the weighted version for each page, there's a, um, there is a cost W1 that is for eviction, eviction of dirty co uh, of, the, of a page P when it's, it is dirty, and W2, which is the weight of evicting uh, the page P when it is clean. And obviously, W1 of P is more, uh, at least as much as W2 of P. And in the unweighted version, W1 and W2 are not page dependent, which means that evicting a dirty copy costs. W1, evicting a, um, a clean copy of page cost W2, and it doesn't matter which page it is. And we assume that all costs are charged upon evictions when we actually know if the data is, um, if, if the page is dirty or not. Um, and a recent work um, that's also a recent work uh, for the problem uh, about this problem showed that there is a K comparative deterministic algorithm for the unweighted version. And that was by Beckman et al. at the Fox uh, 2020, uh, which is pretty recent. So what are our results? We, most all of our results are about the right to power caching and also a generalization of it that we're going to talk later. So our main results are a deterministic weighted right to power caching on an algorithm. We give an integral order of K competitive algorithm and a fractional order of low K competitive algorithm. When a fractional algorithm is when we uh, allow the cache to have 
fractional pages instead of um, instead of uh, only all the page or nothing for the page. We also give a randomized algorithm, which is uh, order of log square k competitive algorithm for weight uh, weight and weight of weight caching. And also, it's important to say that this randomized algorithm is poly time um, is poly time algorithm. We also show hardness. We show that our algorithm in terms of, of um, efficient algorithms is tight, which means that unless MP is a, a subset of VPP, any polytime algorithm for the problem must have a comparative ratio of at least log square K. And an integrality gap that shows that uh, the Rebecca World Caching, the fractional solution, is always at least like, there, there is always a, an instance of random allocation where the fractional solution is at least log k times more cheap uh, to, uh, to serve than um, the um, integral optimal solution, which obviously separates the problem for, from uh, caching when, um, when rounding is very easy. And we're going to talk about it uh, more uh, later. So, our main tool here is the uh, RW paging and multi level paging. RW paging is equivalent to um, random color caching, and we talk about it in the paper. Uh, we show exactly this equivalent. Um, however, in random color caching, we just reduce the problem to something more familiar with us in terms of paging. Each page is replaced by two copies of the page a write copy and a read copy. And the costs are um, for eviction of the write copy is more than eviction of the read copy. And a request for a page of the right, a request for the right copy can only be served by the wrong copy. However, a request for the read copy can be served by either the right copy of the page or the read copy of the page, which means that we can, uh, if we have the right copy in our cache and we get a read request for the same page, then this request is already satisfied and we don't need to fetch anything. And a generalization about of this problem is the multi level paging, where instead of uh, just Two uh, copies of each page. Each page has L different copies, which are sets which we uh, refer to as levels uh, for a page P. And the eviction costs are um, reducing uh, every level we go we go deeper. And the request for a certain specific level for the LI can be uh, served by any one of the copies in the levels J of J lesser or equal to I. Okay, so let's say about let's talk about the relation of the problem to set upper. Which is pretty surprising in itself because set cover uh, seems like a harder problem than regular paging um, in, in terms of um, hardness. So here we, we show that there is a reduction from set cover for online set cover to radical work caching, where each uh, in set cover we have n elements and n sets. Then we reduce it to an instance of radical work caching when we have n plus m pages where each page corresponds to either a set or an element in the set cover instance. And we have a cache size, uh, which is the size of a uh, cache of size, uh, exactly the number of set in the set cover instance. And the eviction of a dirty page and eviction of a clean page are just unweighted. It's just unweighted. It costs W to evict a dirty page and one to evict a clean page. Uh, and W is gonna be much bigger than one. Um, okay. so. Uh, at the beginning, we initialize the, the cache to be when all the set pages are in the cache and not dirty, which is good that we just do a write request to each one of the sets sequentially until all the sets are in the cache and they're all dirty in the cache. Next, we do in the actual reduction. Whenever an element is requested in the online set cover problem, what we're going to do, we're going to request, uh, we're going to, um, we're going to, Request a request sequence in the um, right back aware caching instance that contains multiple read requests for the page that's uh, associated with the element and other set pages that are uh, associated with sets that the element is not contained in those sets. And it turns out that in order to um, in order to um, do the best caching strategy for this instance that we get, which is a bit more complicated than what's here, but we just um, we save you the details uh, to when you actually read the paper. So the best catching strategy is actually to find an optimal size, optimal size set cover for the set cover instance. And uh, we just 
whenever we get the optimal size set cover, we can just work with the space that allocated for sets in the set cover and use it to satisfy all the requests with a cost that is uh, something that, that is um, more or less as the cost of the um, of finding the optimal set. Cover. Okay. So um, what is reduction means? First of all, it's a reduction from online set cover to read by paging, which is in, it's surprising because regular paging is um, is considered a pretty easy problem to uh, in offline algorithm, let's say. And set cover is very hard. It has a hardness, a lot of hardness resolve, which are harder than uh, than paging. And it also implies that the right back aware caching has an integrality gap of omega flow k, which means that whenever we have a fractional solution, it's going to take us at least log k to round it up to an um, integral solution, which is different from regular paging. Also, um, by a result of Feige and Corman in 2005, um, they showed that unless, um, that if there is an algorithm that runs in poly time and it's less than log n, log n competitive, then NP is a, a subset of BPP. What it means is that unless NP is a subset of BPP, no online algorithm can have a competitive ratio um, of less than log square k and also be a point time algorithm for the right back aware cache. This gives us a, a, a clear separation between the regular caching and the right back aware caching um, project. So let's talk about the LP formulation. The LP is similar to the uh, LP for uh, weighted paging. It gives us the way to uh, get the integral and the fractional competitive algorithm um, for the problem. And the main difference about the formulation is instead of using a, 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 a variable for each of the pages, we use a prefix variable, which means for each uh, of the type of pages, we have a, a, a variable that says how much we need to load up until uh, the sum of all copies that can serve this request can um, um, will be in the cache. So this is the LP, and as we said, the prefix variable are uh, the main thing there, and we use the prefix variable to determine if a request is satisfied and if the cache is valid at any time. So how rounding fractional paging works? And um, so Blum virtual 99 did for paging, did BBN in 2007 for weighted paging, and BBMN in 2011 for K server. So the fraction, the uh, rounding for fractional paging is by mapping a fractional solution into a probability distribution over integral k states. And the states in the probability distribution are maintained explicitly, which means that when at any time I must have the entire distribution. And then whenever I may make a change due to the fractional solution um, change changes, I need to update the probability distribution um, uh, and, and still have the distribution. And, update the probability distribution explicitly. And the expected cost of updating the distribution you know, over integral space is at most order one, order of one times the fractional cost, which means that it doesn't cost, cost us too much to update the uh, distribution over integral uh, states. However, it does take us some time and it's uh, highly um, impractical because we just need to keep the entire distribution and maintain the entire distribution. If we have a, a lot of cache states which are which could happen with a positive distribution uh, probability, then it's gonna take us a lot to update the distribution at, at, at each step. So for RW, for RW paging, we uh, try to extend the blunt branch approach. However, we found out that we also uh, uh, that additional to the uh, integrality gap, which means that if we're gonna round, it's gonna lose us a cost, a, a factor of logs uh, of log k. Uh, it seems that maintaining a probability distribution over integral test states uh, would be problematic for the read request where we could have both the write copy and the read copy. And when we round things up, it seems like it's hard to, uh, to make sure that the request is satisfied in all the cache, the integral test states in the, in the distribution. So what we did, we did a, a different approach. We gave a polynomial time randomized rounding for RW paging that loses the factor of log k. However, this um, rounding method is distribution free, which means that all it needs to do is, is using the current cache state 
which is random, obviously. And the, and the fractional solution and the change in the fractional solution at the foreign step, which, um, which would be, which is gonna be polytime, obviously, and, and unlike the, the uh, distribution uh, maintain, maintenance over time. And also we show that it worked for general multi-level paging case, and as we're gonna show immediately, it's gonna work for um, weighted paging. So in terms of um, the rounding, what's gonna happen? So we do we're gonna do a rounding uh, in the spirit of randomized marking, direct rounding that's um, dependent only on the course current cache state and the change in the fractional solution. And the main difference is we, we're gonna use, how we're gonna do it, we're gonna evict things Low k times more aggressively. We know that we must do the factor of low k, so we use it to um, evict log k times more aggressively. And the reason we're going to do it because we want to make sure that whenever the uh, the fractional solution have one space available to load the current page to the cache, we're going to have in expectation log k times more than the fractional solution space in the cache. So we're going to have enough space to load it up. However, in the rare cases where and um, things didn't work out uh, due to randomness of the algorithm, we're gonna need to do a big fix instead and it's gonna happen so rarely then we could load, we could charge it to the cost of the algorithm uh, of the fractional solution. Okay, so how it's gonna work for weighted paging. So assume we have a valid cache state for K equals six and there is a request for a page and we must fetch this page into the cache. So we fetch the page into the cache and then the cache might be too big and we need to evict something from the cache in order to make sure that uh, the cache is still valid after loading up P3. So for each page that is not P3, we evict according to the change in the fractional solution. So let's say a fraction of epsilon is evicted from a page P in the fractional solution. What we're gonna do, we're gonna evict um, the page P if it's in our current cache state, obviously, or otherwise there's nothing to do. We're gonna evict it with probability epsilon log K over the probability that it's in the cache to begin with. And this would mean that the expected cost is at most log k times the cost of the fractional solution. And it also means that um, the marginal um, the marginal probability that a page p is in our current cache state is going to be the same as the fractional solution. So we do this, and maybe due to randomness, the cache might still be too big which could happen. We landed on the wrong side of all the coins that we flipped. And so what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a fixing step and the fixing step gonna be very easy. We're gonna divide our pages to uh, weight classes. And we, because the cache was valid to begin with, we all we need to do is just evict one page. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna iterate over weight classes from the highest, um, for the, from the heaviest pages to the lightest pages. And we're going to find the first weight class for which we have more pages in our solution than the expected number of pages due to the fractional solution. Whenever we find the first one that, um, um, that have more than the expected number, we just have an arbitrary page and we have enough space, play, uh, space to load P3. And that's going to happen very rarely. So what we're going to do, we're going to just charge this thing to the cost of the fractional solution. So let's sum it up. The analysis of the algorithm, what's gonna do? It's gonna evict due to changes in the fractional solution. We do it log k times more aggressively. So it's gonna cost us log k times more than the fractional cost. And the fixing step gonna happen rarely. It's gonna be amortized with the overall fractional cost. And how it's gonna be amortized because we're gonna couple, uh, we're gonna use a careful coupling argument for each of our Cash, uh, cash states, possible cash states by our algorithm with a product distribution that just uh, gets a, just um, get each page in the cache with the distribution, with a probability that is uh, equal to the probability it is in the, in the fractional cache. Um, in expectation, it's gonna, we're gonna have log k more free space in the fractional solution, which means that we're gonna um, we're gonna have use more space than what we can very early, and it's all gonna be amortized with the cost of the function. So that's it. Thank you very much. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you.